Hi, Barrison here from Now Spinning Magazine with another album review. And this is one that I've really looked forward to doing. And it is Ozzy Osbourne and Patient Number Nine. Now, I have not streamed any of the singles. I've avoided listening to it online until the album arrived um, literally um, just a couple of days ago. So I heard it for the first time. Now I'm already aware of several reviews, several loads of reviews, which have not been positive about this album. Now this is just a personal observation here. The problem with channels like mine, um, because I know that there are several, loads of them, is that a lot of them are kind of run by people of a similar vintage to me. Maybe some are slightly younger, um, but we're all kind of run by blokes who've been around the block a few times, lived through the 80s, 90s, noughties, or even me, the 70s and the, and the late 60s. And we've seen it and heard it, heard it and done it and bought the T-shirt several times. And so it's very, it can be very hard for some people to let go of what they've experienced and what it was like. And we all, you know, we all kind of see ourselves as musicologists, but you end up being like academics. And we kind of sometimes forget what it's like to have that sense of wonder when you hear a guitar played through a Marshall amp at the volume set to 11. I remember uh, one of my Zen teachers saying to me, in the beginner's mind, there are lots of opportunities and ideas. And in the expert's mind, there are very few. And I think that's how we can get clouded on how we see these things. So as I approached this album, I was wondering what I was gonna think of it. Now, this is a positive review because I thought this was a stonking, busting, heavy metal album that sounds like Ozzy Osbourne, okay? Now, uh, some, there's been some criticism about, oh, he's got Andrew Watt producing him. Andrew Watt, of course, was the guitarist in California Breed with Glenn Hughes, who then went on um, to become a major Grammy award-winning producer who's produced albums by Post Malone, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam, Ed Sheeran, Elton John, Justin Bieber, Miley Cyrus, um, you know, all sorts of different people. Now, the, some people are like, oh, well, he's, he's, he's gone in you know, this different kind of pop background. Well, you want the best producers, don't you? You want the best producers for your music. You want to, as an artist, you want to sell. You want to break through. You know, you don't want to retread old ground. And there's some criticism, so it's not like No More Tears is the best thing he's done. He hasn't done anything as good as that. Or Bark at the Moon. Or um, whatever else. Or, or, you know, going back to the first early solo albums. But I'll tell you this. If you... you touch base with any of these things and they all have very commercial songs on it with great choruses and great melodies and so does this one it's emotionally kind of less charged than ordinary man i mean ordinary man the track as you saw in my top 10 aussie moments um is is in my top 10 as it moments. I think that lyrically it's superb. Some other people have said, oh, he's going through the same old tropes of like talking about his illness and uh, death and, and you know, the darker side of life. We live in dark times. And Ozzy has had major surgery. He's, he's ill. Uh, he's not a well man and he's fighting against going into that light. He, he really is. And lyrically, He's talking from where he is. In some ways, the lyrics are more, in lots of ways, the lyrics are more mature than, say, um, Robert Halford's Judas Priest stuff, where he just talks about metal, metal, metal. Um, this is, the lyrics are deep, and the lyrics are good, and he sounds great. He, he really, really does. And so, you know, just a quick run view. Um, Patient Number 9 features guitar solo by Jeff Beck. The song is 
to me not obvious it's got a great riff it's got a fantastic chorus it's really catchy it's wonderful to have it as the opening song on the album um the production i feel is is brilliant um his vocals on this track sound a little bit overproduced perhaps perhaps um, but within seconds, you're just latched on to the fact that this is an Ozzy Osbourne album and it's and it launches itself really, really well. It beats it beats the hell out of this one. And this one, Black Rain, it to me, it's way ahead of all of those. Um, Immortal features uh, Mike uh, is it McCary, uh, McCreary on guitar. Uh, that's another great track I put here. Um, another brilliant melody. Um, tight riffing, it's exciting, um, it's punch the air type music, and it's just fantastic. Now, as I was saying about having the beginner's mind, the sense of wonder, it doesn't matter how old you are, there is, if you, I love rock music, you know from this channel, I love all types of genres of music, but I cannot fight against the fact that guitar riffs, Drums, vocals, vocals that <laughs> just scream, yeah, all right, let's go, and just make me feel like I'm in my 20s. It just makes, I've said before, music is the healer. There's something about rock music, metal music, that to me just takes me back and just have an open ear. You don't, it isn't 1993, it's not 1983, it's not 1973, it's 2022, and we're so lucky to Aussie has done this album. Parasite, track three, Zach Wilde on guitar. Very heavy riff, very menacing vocals. Um, it's the heaviest track so far as the album starts. Um, super fast <laughs> guitar solo, brilliant solo. Um, less pinched harmonics than you'd expect from Zach, but it's absolutely brilliant. It has, still has lots and lots of melody. It really is great use of, um, uh, you know, of, of acoustic guitars as well in places the production there's acoustic guitars weaving in and out of places it's just brilliant the next one no escape from now it's not a typical aussie kind of title sabbath and this is the one with tony iomi on the guitar tone tone tony um it opens like planet caravan that kind of um echo type of vocal just like planet caravan from paranoid and it switches to a fairly charging Iomi type guitar riff. Um, midpoint, it's very volume four. It it has it has the ghost of volume four is weaving in and out of the track. It's fantastic. Okay, I know Iomi sounds brilliant on it. Super solo from Tony Iomi there is, and it as a song of lots of different moods. And it as I said, it's very the Sabbath ish and it kind of rolls back into this kind of Planet Caravan thing at the end. But I think it's epic. I really, really do. One of Those Days features Eric Clapton, which was a surprise. And Eric Clapton kind of uh, channels his guitar sound from Disraeli Gears, uh, Wheels of Fire. It's that kind of, I mean, he has played Clapton's kind of more recent live stuff. Uh, with Steve Winwood and the guitar um, festival stuff he did. He, he can really stretch out, but that's what it feels like to me. It's very, very, very clean. And it's got a cool chorus as well. Now, this is the one where um, he talks about, um, if I can find it in the lyrics, and as I've talked through this, you'll see the booklet come up so you can have an idea of what it's, what it's about as well. Um, but this is the one where he says... Um, He's lost. It's about being about being ill, and he says um, it's one of those days when I don't believe in Jesus, etc. And people might misconstrue things like that, but he's been honest. He's had such a time when he fell over and literally he's he's got broken back. He's had all that major surgery. Those are days when he must have thought, you know, his faith was shook to the core, and it's not the day when you believe in anything. I think the lyrics are really, really open and honest. And, you know, growing older is not for wimps, boys and girls. Um, and I think he puts that across as a man in his 70s. And I, I really, really think it's fantastic. And it's commercial. Um, lots of light and shade in the in the production. And but again, a deep, heavy lyric. But it's Aussie. It really is. 
A Thousand Shades also features Jeff Beck on guitar again. Um, soft opening, brilliant, fantastic epi production. It's the closest we're going to get to a ballad at this point. Very reflective lyrics again from Ozzy, which I think are really, really good. And the solo is from Jeff Beck is really, really um, good. And full strings, um, orchestral backing with real violins, not just synthesized sounds, real players. It's absolutely great stuff, epic stuff. Um, and it's, it also has a, an ELO, electric-like orchestra feel in places. And as if they had steered towards a, a more rock approach, what would they have sounded like? A bit like this track. So I really, really like it. The next track is Mr. Darkness, which features Zach Wilde on guitar. Uh, again, acoustic start, um, but typical Aussie vocal and approach. And there's a full throttle heavy metal riff in this. I think Tony Omi is obviously the master of riffs, but Zach Wilde is a contender for the University of Riffology, if you don't mind me saying. I really think he is. Great dynamics. Uh, soft is a soft kind of verses and a hard, uh, hard kind of choruses and stuff. The middle eight is another great riff. And then it, it, it's just, I think it, it's inventive. And again, unlike, I'm not being sacrilegious, some of these other Aussie albums, um, they just scream to me this is way ahead of those to me i think he's made a fantastic album here and the next one we've got is nothing feels right um which is from uh, which also features uh, zach on on the uh, guitar and this one is a really kind of sludgy rock song um powerful chorus picks up about halfway through and more great riffs and solos from zach and again, another song with a feel from Sabbath Volume 4 to me. It really is good. Evil Shuffle is another Zach Wilde um, driven song. This is a great heavy riff, um, great vocals as well. It's typical Aussie. It's, it might seem a bit obvious um, in, in places, but it's still great stuff. Um, so I, I think there's this manic laughter, there's, it's a, there's lyrics about being a madman. Yeah, some of this stuff is, is Aussie material, but he's been out on the edge. He's, he's living up to his image and he's not, he's not um, going gently into that dark night, is he? You know, and that's in many ways is what we want. Degradation Rules features Iomi on guitar again. And this is a very heavy song with harmonica, like the wizard from the first Sabbath album, you know, played by Ozzy himself, Ozzy on harmonica again. You know, absolutely fantastic. The lyrics are really interesting here, and it's probably the heaviest song ever written about masturbation, because that's basically what it's about. Um, but some great, great riffage. Um, it really, really is, and um, it's it's one of my one of my favourite songs on the album. Tayami's guitar tone is fantastic, um, but very interesting observations by the great Oz on this one. Dead and Gone is Zach. And also Mr. Watts, who is not only a brilliant producer, you've got to remember, he was the guitarist with California Breed. And, you know, a really, really um, inspirational player, a prodigy in many ways. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Great bass, driving song, heavy chorus. And it reminds me of something from... I'm about to find it now. Oh, yes. It reminds me of something from this period of Aussie, from the 80s. You know, it's got that kind of feel to me. Fantastic. God Only Knows is another Zach uh, Wyatt and Taylor Hawkins is on drums on this one. Um, great reflective lyrics again from Ozzy. It's a, it's a heavy song, um, wonderful harmonies. It's a commercial chorus. It's melancholy, which you expect from Ozzy as he looks back through his life and what's, you know, where he's been and the stories and the life he's had. I just think it's really, really good. And it's got another really really cool sabbath feel and then we end with darkness blues which is like a um kind of like robert johnson type blues recorded in a field somewhere growing corn 
of the heavily treated Aussie vocal. It's a very short song, Aussie on harmonica again, and short but sweet, but a, a great way out. I think it's the most Black Sabbath sounding solo album Ozzy has done for a long time. Um, and I'm just saying how I feel. It's, it's, it's far heavier than more and more cohesive than something like this, you know. And um, so I played this to me and Sue, listened to it uh, again last night. And I was thinking it would be, be as good as this because this almost sounded like a swan song, like he was going to bail out at this point. I didn't think there was going to be another one. Um, but this to me is life affirming, punch the air stuff. Put your hands on your hips and throw your head back and shout. Um, this is a great heavy metal album, and I think Ozzy sounds great. And um, all those people out there saying they're tired of it or they, they've, it's not, it's you know, they stopped listening to Ozzy in 1995 or whatever. Just imagine being 19 and hearing this. And that's the thing about reviewing albums or whatever. It's putting something on and doing your best, it's not easy for us older people, and just hearing it for the first time, without judging what it was like to, um, what it was like in 1982, because it isn't 1982, it's 2022, and when you hear it like this, with brand, with fresh ears, with that sense of wonder in your heart, that what made you get excited when you heard loud guitars and lyrics, that touched you because they do. I, I think that if you you weave in and out of the the, the some of the uh, the kind of imagery and stuff that he's talking from me from a personal point of view and they're honest, they're honest lyrics. And you have to, for those of us who are following behind, it, it's inspirational. And you think what he's been through and what he's like and his heart, um, how he sings from it. I just I just loved it. So. Stream it if you're not sure. Listen and watch all the interview, all the interviews, all the reviews you'll see out there, but have a balance to it. Because to me, this is a Boston rocking metal album and deservingly one of Ozzy's best to me. And he's still got it. And yes, there are other ones in his catalog which have got great moments and but people saying, oh, he's trying to he's trying to be too poppy. No, he's not. He's, every Aussie album has got a commerciality to it and choruses and melody. They all have because his voice suits it. And I think Andrew Watts has done a fantastic job and he's an inspiration to Aussie and all the guest artists make this to me an essential purchase for anyone who loves rock music and who feels that rock music keeps them bouncing around the room and keeps us young at heart so thank you very much for watching thank you for subscribing thank you for ringing that bell thank you for visiting the website thank you for all of you who are investigating whether becoming a patron of now Spinning magazine but i wish you all a fantastic week ahead stay safe keep spinning those records and i shall see you on my next video